like to call tonight's meeting to order. Uh, may I have a motion to move into the regular business meeting? Andy? Second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Would you all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence? Judy, would you please? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Congratulations to the Portage High School Music Department for their fantastic and festive winter concert that was held last week in the high school auditorium. After school enrichment sessions have begun at the high school. Each session provide additional classroom support and regents prep and are being held Monday through Friday at the high school. The schedule is available on the daily high school announcement and it has been emailed to all students. Three Fort Jervis volleyball players received official recognition for their athletic ability, sportsmanship, and overall contributions to the volleyball court. They were nominated and chosen by all the Section 9 coaches. Congratulations to Addison McElroy for the first team class B, Madison Balmos for second team class B, and Emma Molly for honorable mention to class B. Something in our school that we are doing this year is the 12 days of cases. Each day is a new crime case that Ms. Dancunez hangs outside her classroom. Students are to go outside and look at the bulletin board and see um, the, a description of the crime scene, which is usually a murder case. There's a picture of the suspect and then um, a QR code to scan. Students then scan the QR code and they put their answer in and the first five to be correct and solve the case win a prize and the rest of the students go on the nice list which is posted outside of Dan Kunis's room. The French Honor Society is excited to announce their Bush de Noël event. The Bush de Noël is a traditional French Noël cake and on December 21st they will be judging who has the best decorated. All French and Spanish students are invited to enter this event. For more information, you can speak to any French Honor Society member. Staff and students at Fort Jervis High School and Fort Jervis Middle School have been wearing yellow all month to represent the character trait of month, tolerance. Hi. Some like senior items we have to remember for juniors that they are asked to bring two <coughs> copies of their two letters of recommendations, their resume, and any college acceptance letters. You can give them to Ms. Kozinski in the guidance office on the right side. And to, this helps with their scholarship packets that will be handed out before Christmas break. Seniors, check your email, of course. There's a bunch of new information that are sending out by the officers and the people. <laughs> um, there's an email sent out by Mrs. Shields with your senior cap and gown forms. Please fill that out. The deadline is by January 9th and the $10 payment is due by March 1st. Parent ads for the yearbook are due the 23rd. All pictures should be labeled and ads are handed in to Mrs. Van Horn from room 104 or the front office. And then some upcoming events. Uh, Wednesday, December 14th, which is tomorrow, the boys are having their home, boys basketball is having their home opener against 
Delaware Valley. JV's playing at 5 and varsity's at 6.30. Week next is a scholarship packet they're going to be handed out. Tuesday the 20th, there's going to be a high school honor roll breakfast for the students that earned honor roll for the past first quarter. Friday the 23rd, progress reports are going to be distributed and will be available online. And then from the 26th to January 2nd are, is winter break. And then January 10th is the next PJHS PTSA meeting at 7 p.m. in room 132. Thank you. Thank you very much, May. Great reports. Uh, next, we have uh, middle school tech uh, presentation. Dave Gibaldi, middle school students. having us here tonight. I have with me two eighth grade students, Terry Wright and Peyton Gurliachi, and we just want to share with you a little bit about a field trip that we took back in the middle of November. Um, and we, we went to the property that the school district owns along 209, and we did a forestry themed field trip where the students learned about how we get lumber from the woods, how to manage the forest and property, and then how we take the lumber and turn it into um, you know, a finished product. And here we brought with us a couple of the things that were built uh, in that day. Um, do we have the picture? We do have uh, a picture slideshow. Um, highlighting some of the events of the day. I can um, I can share the pictures with whoever would like to see them. We can't get it, I guess, to work on the screen, but um, I can I can share the, the the pictures if anybody would like to see them. Just email me; I'd be happy to to, to share that along with you. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview, and then I'm going to have each of the students talk to a little bit about um, kind of what what they saw that day and. and some of the activities that we did a little bit more specifically. Um, so we did have a volunteer forester come in and we had a sawmill set up and I brought in a team of logging mules and we talked about um, tree identification, how to safely cut down trees with just enough mystery that the kids won't go home and try to cut a tree down themselves. <laughs> Uh, how to work safely in the woods because logging is a dangerous business. Um, and just try to expose the kids to all different different topics. Um, I then, before the trip, we challenged the high school technology students to design a bench and some furniture that could be built without fasteners, so no screws or nails, whatever could be built in the woods that day um, with basic hand tools. <coughs> awesome. It makes it a lot more exciting. <laughs> so um, I'm 
just going to kind of talk and click through, and then when we get to certain images, that's when my students will jump in. So that actually works out better this way. Uh, so you can see the kids. We had a little campfire set up because it was cold. Uh, the kids got to make s'mores at lunchtime. It was pretty exciting. If you ask them, that was probably their favorite part of the day. Um, <laughs> but uh, there's our trusty team waiting to go uh, get our next pitch for the day. Uh, talking a little bit about why we use draft animals in the woods as opposed to heavy equipment. Uh, let's see if that was for me. Mr. Higgins joined us that day along with the rest of the high school technology department and they were a huge help um, in some of the activities that we did that day. Uh, here we are bringing some of the logs out of the woods and those logs, those trees were actually cut down that day. So we went from a tree standing in the woods to a finished product. And I think that's what Kate and you're gonna talk about, right? You wanna tell them? shows two parts of the of the process. We were bringing logs out and we had a, a log on the sawmill so we were actually able to cut the lumber that day. So again we went from standing tree to log to lumber. Um, in some cases the log wasn't even on the ground an hour before it was already cut into usable material. Um, we were going to try to see how many kids it took to pull a log compared to a team of mules, but the kids went out. So. <laughs> um, here we are demonstrating different different techniques for attaching to the log. Uh, we talked about different careers that they could do related to forestry and lumber and wood. Um, we in fact had a few of the BOCI students attend and I think they're called Z days is that right yeah. right where they get credit for like on job training um, and we actually had one of our one of our high school BOCI students up there he is Anthony Anderson he was actually proficient enough using the sawmill by the end of the two days that he was able to operate it himself I mean obviously with with some skilled supervision but but he was cutting lumber all by himself and was able to kind of show other people and explain to other people what it was that he was doing. So I thought that was that was really fun to see the that aspect of it. The kids also had an opportunity to use go old school and use two man saws. Um, and we're gonna have to take a lot of pictures so I'm gonna try to <laughs> skip ahead sorry. Um, Harry, why don't you come up and you start talking about your piece and I'll get to that picture, okay? So I'm going to try to find the picture as quickly as I can. Um, the art teacher, Miss Penny, came with us and she had the idea when we had some downtime to challenge the kids to build a teepee while we were there. So I'm just over a close to the picture, so I'm sorry. So I'm sorry. Yeah. 
Well, if you didn't know, some kids, along with Mr. Graham, uh, named it the Honorary Camp Cavaldi. So the, the students at the high school created the uh, CNC, they used the CNC router to make a sign. Uh, so that was, that was fun. There we go, Terry. There's our teepee of the day. <laughs> which was a lot of fun, especially with all the other students, where we'll go along the little property line for the camp, mm -hmm. gathering certain things for the, yeah. like how the first group went the one day and they started the structure and we just added on finding the door, the rocks, Somewhere's off to the side, we built a small little like rock circle for what would be a what was it? What would have been a fire pit? Yeah. Um, it was great for teamwork, and then we also found the, the center block, and we put a tree in it. Yep. Yeah, you, they made their own garden out of a, out of some branches and and some rocks to hold up the tree, right, Terry? Yeah. yeah, you guys did a really good job, and and and. They got to use what, like natural resources, yep. right, to build different structures and things like that. So, so we did a variety of different <coughs> things with the students. The greatest part, and I think the greatest takeaway, is that the kids were really interested in wanting to go back and wanting to share it with other kids in the district, right? So it made some great connections. This time we did high school to middle school, and in polling the students we found that the middle school students wanted to go back with maybe elementary students and take what they learned from this trip and share it with, with younger kids. And I think that's a, that this is a great resource that we have. We really appreciate you letting us use this. We've been doing this, I think this is the third time that we've used the property for a field trip similar to this. And uh, we just wanna say thank you for, you know, for letting us you know, make this happen and, and you know, creating this opportunity for the kids. I think they really enjoyed it, right? So that's all I have. Anybody wants to try out chair or bench, feel free. Otherwise, we'll get it out of your way. I want to tell you, very nice presentation. And beautiful people. It is. Yes, it is. Thank you. Yeah. What would normally be firewood is turned into beautiful furniture, yeah. right? Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> you can carry it. <laughs> you can carry it. You can have it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Audit. Excuse me. The state comptroller's office came in and did an audit 
of our books and particularly our fund balance. And uh, at the time that they did the audit, it was June 30th of 2021. Uh, at the time, we had 23.6 million in our savings account, which is our fund balance. Uh, since then, the voters last May approved using 10 million of that towards our capital project. So that took it down to 13.6. And um, 13.6. Yes, and then now we have another 8.2 million uh, that we're responsible for. Orange Ulster Bosey's recently approved the capital project a month, month and a half ago uh, for $158 million. And Port Jervis's share of that is 8.2 million. So we had two op options for the board to consider when it comes time to do that. We could either pay 8.2 million out of that fund balance up front, or we could finance it for 20 years at five and a half percent through the dorm authority of New York State. Uh, they're the only two options. So we can either pay 8.2 million up front or pay 13.8 million after interest is included. So obviously I think it's, uh, the board is pretty solid on spending that 8.2. So once you spend the 10 for the project that the voters approved last year, and then you spend the 8.2 million for the BOCES project, that takes our $23.6 million fund balance down to 5.6 million. So it dropped dramatically. It was saved up for specific purposes and now it's being allocated and then fund balance will come back into alignment of where the state wants us to have it. So I just wanted to explain that. It's also detailed on an article that I wrote on our website, but I wanted to explain, because that 23 million number is shocking, like holy cow. So I wanted to explain how, where 18.2 of it is already accounted for, we're down to 5.6. Um, the next thing is I wanted to, we talked last meeting about the mini auditorium. There was plans to convert this cafeteria into a mini auditorium when this becomes the middle school in the fall of 2024. And then after further conversations with the music department, um, they were concerned that if the conceptual plan wasn't gonna work out well enough, that it wouldn't be large enough to have concerts here or drama shows or anything of that nature. So um, we measured the distance from the back of the stage to the front of the stage in the high school auditorium and we measured the pit area. And, uh, and that's uh, where the stage, we were to drop the high school stage and the high school pit in this room right now. Row one of seating would be one row behind the last set of blue chairs. So the seats would start behind all of you. So you can see, you would either shrink the stage dramatically or you wouldn't have very many seats. So that is why the ladies in the music department said to me a few months ago, let's put the brakes on that project because it's not gonna work. It also didn't have lights or rigging for scene changes and things of that nature. So, so we're not gonna spend that 2.8 million on this room. We'll keep that money in the bank and then consider other options for auditoriums in the future. Uh, if we need an auditorium for the middle school, we have a place for it on the end of the building, actually. So but we're gonna measure how much we use the high school auditorium after the, room, after the school switch and take it from there. So that's just the scoop on the mini auditorium, pros and cons and all that. Since we're talking about exciting stuff like audits and not building a mini auditorium, let's talk about mascots. Uh, as many of you know, the state has come down uh, unequivocally about uh, ending any relationship in terms of mascots, logos, and those kinds of things related to Native Americans. And uh, <coughs> we got rid of any uh, Native American logos on our uniforms many, many years ago. We haven't really used any of those. Uh, but what we're not sure is we would still be allowed to use the Raider name if we don't, if it has no connotation to Native Americans. For example, the Oakland Raiders, who are now the Las Vegas Raiders, their, their logo is really a pirate. There's a mean looking guy with an eye patch and two swords and all those things. Uh, so it has nothing to do with, with Native Americans. So what we're trying to find out from State Ed is if we have no logo or we have a logo like the Las Vegas Raiders and NFL team, is that acceptable as long as it has no connotation to Native Americans? So we're waiting for an answer on that. Um, and I'm hoping that that will be okay because I can't imagine us ever not being the Raiders. There's just something that would be so strange about that. That's a poor Jerry so long. So uh, stay tuned for that. And then finally, uh, since it's our only meeting in December, I want to wish everybody here and at home happy holidays. Thank you, thanks. Uh, 
Next, uh, Assistant Stu Superintendent for Business, Mr. John Hill. Thank you. Just an uh, announcement that the Health and Wellness Committee meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, January 11th, 2023. Difficult to say that. At 3.30 in the high school library. Library, And the right after that is the Safety Committee meeting. That's that same day, Wednesday, January 11th at 4.30 in the high school library. So today, just to let everybody know, representatives from New York State Department of Education Food Service Department conducted a review of the Food Service Department within uh, our district, focusing mainly on the high school. And they made some minor recommendations, but on the whole, everything went very well. So um, it was good news. And today we met as a Buildings and Grounds Committee. We had our first meeting, and Mr. Hockenberry will actually report on that uh, during the board committee report. So thank you. Thank you very much. Next, our consent item. These are item A, minutes from the November 15, 22 regular meeting. Item B, the minutes from CSE meetings on 11-4, 11-7, 11-10, 11-14, 11-15, 11-16, 11-17, 11-18, 11-21, 11-28, 11 29, 11-30, 12-1, and 12-2. Item C are the minutes from the CPSE meetings on 9-5, 11 9 11 15 11 18 12 1 12 2 and 12 6. item b is the disposal of outdated erectable equipment item b is the treasurer's financial report for november of 22. with that can i have a motion for the report thank you moved by mike cockberry Second by Flo. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item seven, our personnel employment item. Item A, the leave of absence. Item B is the resignation, vacancy number 2421, coaching, Damian Strosky, high school weightlifting intramurals for the winter. Item C is appointment, vacancy 2421, <coughs> co-curricular, club advisor, coach intramural, hourly instructional positions for the 22-23 school year. Item D is the appointment support staff, vacancy 2478, position 484, probationary school monitor. Item E is an appointment administrative staff, Vacancy 2495, position 522, provisional school lunch director. Item F is the appointment instructional staff, vacancy 2503, position 552, temporary elementary education teacher leave replacement. Item G is appointment substitute teachers and nurses for the 22 23 school year. Item H the amendment to tenure eligibility date. Item I, change in status, support staff, probationary to permanent status, school monitor. May I have a motion to bring that to the floor, please? Um, Moved by Judy, second? I'll second. Second by Kara. Any questions or comments? I would just like to make a comment. Sure. So Aaron is here this evening, so I just want to say congratulations. Experience, energy, and professional who stood out, and uh, I look forward to working with you uh, moving forward. So, congratulations. Thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Item 8 is action items the scholarship. Fort Jervis High School, Class of 1999, Memorial Scholarship. I have a motion on that? Moved by Flo. Second? Second. Second by Phil uh, Hockenberry. All in favor? Aye. Or Mike? Sorry, Phil. No. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item B is a capital project, allowances, and change orders. I have a motion. 
on April. Second. Second. Thank you, Dan. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Item C is a corrected tax roll from Orange County Real Estate Tax Services against the 2223 tax warrant. Have a motion on that? I'll hold it. Second. Moved by Judy. Second by Jason. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Opposed? <coughs> uh, item D is the lead evaluator of teachers, 2223 school year, Tanya Duryea and Margaret Fitzgerald. May I have a motion on that? I'll move it. Moved by Bill Harris, <coughs> by Mike. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Next one is the lease agreement with 150 Pike Street Limited Partnership. This will be a roll call vote. And the motion reads, motion and second to approve and have the board president sign the lease agreement with 150 Pike Street Limited Partnership pending a final review and any unnecessary modifications by our attorneys. We have a motion on that? Moved by Flo. I'll second. Second, it. second by Andy. Roll call vote. Judy? Yes. Yes. <coughs> Annie? Yes. Bill Harris? Yes. Jason? Yes. Mike? Yes. Kara? Yes. Flo? Yes. Now me yes. Motion carries. Item F is the grant for the Port Jervis Foundation grants to Port Jervis High School, Port Jervis Middle School, ASK, and HBE. May I have a motion on that? I'll move. Move by Flo. Second. Second by Kara. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, item G is the first reading of policy number 5570 and 5575. May I have a motion on that, please? Move. Moved by Judy. Second. Yeah. Oh, was it Nancy? Nancy? Sorry, I didn't walk up. Nancy, but I will second. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item H is the first and final reading of policies 5241, 5580, 5581, 5610, and 5630. May I have a motion on that? Motion. Nancy. Second. Second by Flo. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next are the uh, board member committee reports. And the first one is buildings and grounds. Bill Hockery. Myself, Bill Onfrey, Dr. Bell, uh, John Timms, and uh, Don Priest, Josh Jennings. Um, we discussed several topics, including uh, phase one, Don Priest updated committee on the current middle school project. Areas A and B are in the reconstruction phase, while area C is still in the demolition and abatement phase. Um, phase two, the design drawing was sent to the state education department back in October. Plans to send phase two out to bid early 2023. Work on the high school field will occur in the summer of 2023. And all high school middle school interior work and the new middle school fields 
are slated to be completed by August of 2024. Uh, capital project finances, John Tim brought the committee up to speed on the finances related to the capital project. The project continues to be under budget despite the extra abatement that was in um, office space. We discussed that. The committee discussed options for office space as we look to move the PPS office out of the Hunt building. The next capital project we discussed, the committee spoke on any future capital project ideas, more work needs to be done, and uh, you obtain price estimates and uh, prioritize some of these projects. Uh, other items we discussed were several possible projects through uh, NYSERDA, including adding air conditioning to the schools at little or no cost in a solar field to offset the electricity cost. Uh, we also discussed upgrading security cameras and card access through a state reimbursement program as well as enhancement to the high school auditorium. Our next meeting is scheduled for sometime in January. We don't have a date yet, but we'll be determined. Thanks, all right. Okay, uh, I just want to make a quick comment. I, I just want to really thank uh, John Tim. He uh, has uh, he gave the uh, the board this evening and also the committee a flow chart of the expenses, which is just terrific and it's very easy to read and follow, and very helpful in following the course on this project. So I just want to thank you. Uh, next is DLT, Bill Harris. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deer Park, Flo? Not Deer Park, it's the okay. Fort Whittier. All right. Not one of the numbers, Okay. Danny, <laughs> Port Jervis? Well, Port Jervis is hopping, you know. We yeah. had uh, the Halloween parade, it was very successful. We um, had done the, the Pearl Harbor event at the uh, out. I just ran down to the Chorus concert real fast. Uh, kids are also doing a great job down there. Miss Halpenny is hitting a home run again. Uh, happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I, too, would like to wish everybody happy holidays. Um, I want the bench. <laughs> I just like the bench. I think you should watch it. How good you are. <laughs> Congratulations to Willie Wonka cast and crew. 
I was unable to attend. However, I would have had I been here because uh, I love that, <coughs> that uh, particular musical. And congratulations to Addison, Madison, and Emma. And um, Merry Christmas to all. <laughs> okay. Annie? Um, I also attended the play, and I never had gone to it. And let me tell you, it was phenomenal. I mean, and seeing the kids that I saw when they were in kindergarten and on that play was just phenomenal. I mean, I could not express, you know, and every and all the kids were so attentive. There was no problem or anything, you know. I mean, you know, who's waiting? Everybody could just, you know. And it was just great. And we thank Mr. Harris. He made the meal for them and that. And it was just, you know, I, I just want to, the students did a phenomenal job with their performances. And I want to give a special thank you to all who made the production a huge success. Kudos to everyone. And I do want to thank you. Bill? Oh, no, I got more. <laughs> um, I attended the, the event in honoring the veterans at HBE. The students were honored and recognized who served our country. And I'll tell you, it was, they, they sang, I mean, they had music, and the little kids were dancing. I mean, it was just wonderful there. I mean, Nancy was there, and Flo was there, it was Dr. John, Joey John, and Mrs. Jury. And I'll tell you, it was phenomenal how they talked about the veterans and everything. And it was just, you know, I've never gone to these things, but I'll be there all the time. Not because of one it's, it's just great. It's just great. And also, the pupil personnel newsletter I would like to address. We now have a letter, a newsletter from pupil personnel. This newsletter is to update the board and the district on to what is happening. Uh, there are nice various things that are going on in the department as we move the district forward and making great strides. And I would also like to uh, wish everyone a happy holiday season and happy Kwanzaa. Uh, Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa, that's what I just knew that. Thank you. And be safe. Be safe. Bill? I uh, just wanted to say happy holidays and I wish everybody a happy, healthy New Year. Year. I want to thank Janet and Linda once again for letting me be part of the production team. Before Willie Walker Jr., I was the musical director for this particular show. We had a great time, Julia, and I worked with you again. And uh, the HPE presentation for the veterans was phenomenal. It was very moving. Uh, the house is packed. The kids did a great job. And I just, uh, you know, and uh, I just hope that keeps up in the future because we do owe a lot to our veterans. But other than that, and I just want to mention one thing. Did Mr. Jubolke? Mike? Oh, hold on. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Are we back? No. Diane, you're back. Oh, sorry. Mike, Mike. Is that Mike? No, I'm good. Yes, I just want to mention Um, We have uh, two previous employees from the Butcher's district they came up to my office uh, I don't know, a couple hundred cards that they made out for two of them I want to say thank you to Joe McBride and Barbara Hamilton they had uh, had a couple hundred cards that they made out for the veterans for Christmas so I took them to the local veterans uh, place here so they know the girls and stuff that taught them there for many many years they were in the building and um, I gave them to them, and they took a handful, and it's going to be there for the veterans who come into the office for, med you know, medication and, and medical. And the rest are taken over to Castle Point. They hand out to all our veterans that are there. And uh, I want to thank them so much because, like I said, there's a couple hundred of them that they made out to give to the veterans for Christmas time. Uh, Annie was correct when we went to HP for the veterans program. It was just, just. It's just beautiful that everybody is remembering our veterans and what they did for us and just the thank you and stuff. I happen to be a judge on uh, Voice of Democracy, so I don't know who won. Um, we'll find out in January when the contest, but don't hold it against me. We do not get names, we get numbers. One, two, three, four, 
about it. And I think there had to be close to 30, which so the students really took charge and did what they did to write these essays out. And um, I, there had to be between 25 and 30 of them did. And so like I said, please, maybe I shouldn't have mentioned that, that I was a judge. Because <laughs> yeah. I take the top three and stuff. <clears throat> I, I very well, it's so hard to, you know, say who's was better than who's. You know, you just don't know. But I got, got complimented for even doing that job. Um, I think that's it. I wish you all a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, but most of all, a healthy and a happy new year. And thank you for everything you do for our district. Kara? Um, yeah, I also want to just express my appreciation for the directors of Willy Wonka. I see they're here. Um, what a fabulous show. All three of them, I had to go to all three. They were, they were wonderful. They overcame you know, sickness and all kinds of things to just put on a, a spectacular performance. Um, so thank you for all the hard work, everyone involved. I'm sure Katie McCain, everyone involved. But um, it, it, was, it was just a wonderful experience for my daughter and I'm sure all the cast members involved. So thank you. And also just want to wish everyone Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. Okay. Next I have dates to remember. Wednesday, December 14th. HBE, PTA meeting at 6 p.m. at the HBE. Thursday, December 15th, is the HBE holiday concert, 7 p.m. at the high school auditorium. Friday, December 16th, report cards distributed, uh, elementary school, trimester one, for ASK and HBE. Monday, December 26th through January 2nd, winter recess, school is closed, district wide. Monday, January 16th is Martin Luther King Day, schools are closed. Tuesday, January 10th, Fort Jervis High School, PTSA meeting, 7 p.m. in high school room 133. Friday, January 13th, Fort Jervis Middle School, YMCA Beat the Streets program, 6.30 to 9 p.m. at the ASK Gym. Friday, January 13th, ASK Performing Arts presenting Disney's Camp Rock, the musical, one act edition show, 7 p.m. at the High School Auditorium. Saturday, January 14th, Disney's Camp Rock, the musical, one act edition, two shows, 2 p.m., 7 p.m. in the high school auditorium. And Tuesday, January 17th, Board of Education meeting, 7 p.m. in the high school <coughs> auditorium. With that, I'll entertain the motion to. Mr. President, can I just say one more thing? God forbid. Just one. Dr. Dow. Yes, ma'am. I want to thank you for tonight. Thank you for your, your explanation on some of the things that we needed to talk about. I think it's very important. And Mr. Tim, thank you also for your hard work. But honestly, it really, I'm, I'm so proud that you did this, and I, I want to thank you. I want to thank you in front of everybody and all our residents at the Deer Park, Fort Jervis, and for the folks, because that's what we have to do. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'm done. Can I have a motion to adjourn, please? I move. And second by Judy. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Good night, everybody. Drive safe. <laughs>